the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh. It disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind claim to your flesh, as if it will not decay and fail you. One day the crude biomass that you call the temple will wither, and you will beg my kind to save you. Hello everyone, I am Lorthorn, you are here to learn what is Warhammer 4K Mechanus, and I have some answers. So Warhammer 4K Mechanus is a strategy game, it plays a lot like XCOM, but um, has several different features which makes it pretty interesting. It is also based around being tech priests fighting necrons instead of humans fighting aliens. So. Well, actually, I guess it is humans fighting aliens, but it's tech priests against necrons instead of humans on Earth fighting uh, sectoids and whatever other aliens are in XCOM. I have to say, from my first impressions of this game, it is a lot of fun. There are some mechanics that I find a bit janky, but I'll get into that later. But yeah, there is. it's a lot of fun. It's a very pretty looking game. It has some very nice graphics. Already, you can see on the title screen, they're showing off the model they made for your cruiser, and it's a very nice looking cruiser, it's that very gothic style that Warhammer has. It's quite nice looking. So the game is uh, definitely nice looking just from the menu. Um, so let's look at some options here in this game. Let's give you a quick understanding of the optional game before we get into it. So it does have audio. Master volume, music, sound effects. So very basic, very straightforward, very easy to use. Now the video settings have um, something to be wanted for because from this menu you cannot affect the graphics, which is um, a bit unfortunate because if your system can't run at the highest graphics, you can't bump it down any lower to try to find something that your system run, thus making it rather limited. Um, expanse of you just have to have good enough to play this game because there's no range of lowering your graphics or increasing them. There is the full screen, V-Sync, audio analysis, ambient occlusion, bloom, motion blur, reflection, which might make your system run a bit better if you try optimizing it. However, it doesn't switch around. However, regardless of that, I with my system, which is pretty good, but still with my system this game seems to run fine without any hiccups. Now, the key bindings, it's very straightforward key bindings, just all the keys you'll basically need. And you can rebind them if you want to, but it's very straightforward. This game can be played just with a mouse, so you don't need any of these key bindings, but it's there, it's nice options to add. So, option-wise, this doesn't have anything in the video, but um, key and audio are straightforward, very good. So. I'm going to load up the game I've been playing and show you off my spaceship as it is. So let's load up the save game. So I am apparently a bit of a way into this game. So in this game, you've got your little overship here. You can see again, the graphics are quite nice. The inside the ship, all the tech priests sitting around here, little servo skull flying about. It's very Warhammer 40k, very much the aesthetic of the tech priests, the mechanists. It's very nice. I quite like it. It's a very pretty game. It's got this sort of gritty dark field, little skulls everywhere, running everything, servicing. So, uh, in this menu, this is where you see your missions. So, here you have the mission progresses, various different missions. These people have opposing views. I'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, so it shows you what you're at, and then it shows you your missions along the way. So, these are the missions I have done. And this is the progress 
of the Necron's Awakening. So what is the Necron's Awakening progress bar? Well, the Necron Planet Tomb World is slowly waking up, and as you play the game, this thing slowly ticks up until whatever happens, I don't know yet. But, uh, yes. First impression-wise, you don't know what happens with that, I don't know, but I suspect that it's bad. So then you have these various different missions. So you have um, Skeptor, who, he is very interested in gathering scientific knowledge. So you've got like opposing people basically in your court or mission. So he's very interested in science and studying the um, Necrons and learning more about them. And he doesn't really care about soldiers' lives. He just wants to keep on going and have everything die. So he sort of like gives you this vision of who he is. Again, very cool little graphics, shows you the world, shows you where you're going. The missions, you have your objectives, so find any Archon tech from previous excavations, then has rewards, it will give you things, and then it shows you this difficulty is normal, and here are the different enemies you're going to have to fight. Now, sometimes you'll have already encountered these enemies, and sometimes they'll be new, and so it'll be a new challenge, and you might be scared to encounter something new if you're not ready for it. And we have... Or, or um, Vindix, who's very much, um, quotes scripture, he's very religious. Another view of the tech priest, instead of being the wishing for scientific research and learning all things, he is very much based around um, serving the Omnisire according to the text. He's very much um, wants to kill all Exenos he finds and destroy them, purify this world. Then we have Kempara. I think she is much based around um, the Scutri and getting the survivors and devices, so she's very much saving um, basic humans or sort of basic humans and um, helping out humanity, which is the duty of the mechanist tech priests. That's why I'm feeling for her. I'm not exactly sure about that masky guy. And then Kepoterix is, um, she seems to fully hand out the big missions. So she, um, hand out this boss mission for us to go hunt down Lord Ostrium Erekor, oh, piss. I can't pronounce his name. But, um, so she sends, hands out the big missions and she gives you rewards and various other things. All right, so over here we have the tech. One one complaint I do slightly have about this game is it's like a stylistic choice, but as you saw there, there's that little screen effect, which I don't know, it feels a little glitchy, a little sickening. So it shows you the technology you've already had, basically everything you've unlocked. So we've got our weapons, we got our support items, the troops we've unlocked, the ship upgrades we've gotten, so we have more cognates, we'll get into that, and we have um, additional tech priest, and then this is some um, information about the um, special power so we can get the chance cycles. Now this game actually does have some very good music, I'll just shut up for a bit and turn it up for you to hear. Very grim, darky music, though. It's quite nice, it's quite atmospheric. Definitely sets the scene. It's just kind of fun to listen to. All right, so now, um, cohort. So this is um, showing you which guys you have access to for missions, and also your tech priest lineup. So I currently have three tech priests, but also gives you like uh, this little Skitera Ranger and I have my Serviators, both very basic troops. There's extra slots, I don't know what fills them up. This is a first look. So if you want a total review of every single detail in the game full of spy spoilers, you can go there. However, this is a initial feeling, and um, so you can learn what's what. So you can customize your faction. You can be color of Mars, color of Raza, color of the Mechanoids, or my own custom color, which is this green and white. 
Uh, now I kind of like it. It's kind of hideous, but all the same, I like the color, but just difference of view. Um, you can change your main color about. So uh, a lot of customization and very little customization, sort of, if you understand that. All right, now you've probably been wondering what this is, the Toll of Blackstones. Blackstones is basically how you upgrade your troops, or so I've found, which, I don't know, I like that feature. It's it's very, there is one type of payment for everything, and that's Blackstones. You don't have other resources to vote, it's just Blackstones. That's how you mess around your guys. Now this um, priest is level four. I cannot upgrade him at the current moment because I've spent all my upgrades. However, so they have various different slots, and you can see how it affects them. So this guy is purely Neely Priest, um, Magnus Legeris. He um, is good at attacking, and um, he has a chance weapon range, although I haven't given him any ranged weapons. However, I can change that if I want to. So he currently has these infectious mechandrites, which are like these little tendrils you see up there, which strike things. However, I can remove those from him. Very simpler, simply. He gets rid of those. And then I can give him, in his weapon slots, these little guns if I wanted to instead. So, as you can see, you can customize them quite a bit and give them a bunch of different little guns to wield if you want to. And he has much better range with his guns. Or I can get rid of those, and I can give him this, well, okay, I can drag this little claw up here, and it gives him now this little Healy backpack in which he can heal people with, so makes him more of a support role if I want that. Or I can give him this thing which makes it so he has a, you have a chance to miss him, so it basically makes him stealthy. So you can give them little backpacks. They also have uh, clothing you can customize, however, he's not the best one to see that, but he's got these little robot legs, which I like quite a bit. It makes him faster. So I'm going to um, leave him with... I think I'm going to re-equip this gun to him and attach this little spike here. So he can run about, shoot things, spike them, and then he's got his big old axe, which he can kerchop people with. He's got like a power axe. And then... I have this guy who's definitely my most powerful. He's Magus Jeremiah, and he's quite fast. He's got some good scans. He's got some cool abilities, and he's very much kid out. So he's got little guns on him. This is like a big laser. It's quite powerful. It's my favorite weapon. Got his axe, but he also has all these customized body parts. So, like we can take off his beard, and then. Well, without, he doesn't have it, but we put it back on, and it gives him some armor, and also more slots, so they have a capacity of the amount of augmentations they can have. So I'm pretty sure he's at max capacity, yeah, he's at max capacity, but they have augmentations you can basically, slots that you can give to them, and various different things use up, so all these areas use up augmentations. However, he has quite a few augmentations he has. So this guy is very much mealy, hitty, bully guy. He's quite good. He's my strongest guy. I like him quite a bit. And then I have my little support priest here who can heals himself, gives me stuff, and he's just purely range-based. He doesn't have much special about him. Just this um, little overseer's vest. So again, options in here, settings, very much the same. Sometimes they change in certain games. This one's they don't at all, though. So we can just close that up, return back to the game. But yeah, you use Blackstone to buy stuff. How I don't have any at the moment. So we're just going to do this mission. So we're going to launch the Lord of Stromna. This guy you have located the Sarcophagus of Lord, Explosives in his tomb, Prime Mechanist, High Risk Mission, Destroy Increase. So it's eliminate a boss. However, one thing I want to point out again. Just look how good these guys look like. I really like their looks like they're... You can customize them. I also really like that. Just so much customization. They look so good and they got their little servo skulls. It's very Warhammer 4K. They're very dark, spooky looking fellows. This guy's like a little priest with tentacle legs. Sort of octopus thing going on. 
This guy's just got his guns, he walks around life. I really like it. It's a really good feeling game. Even if we go back to my friend um, over here, you can see he's got these robot arms installed. So he's got these like, robotic arms with his big punchy fists, which make him have more HD and more critical chances. He's just... Oh, he, he's so good looking. This game's so good looking. This guy's got like the special robes to wear, which change up his pants. They're, it's a really good looking game. I really like its look. So, let's launch this mission. So it gives us rewards, tells us beforehand, says what we're going up against. So we get Arc Rifle, which looks pretty cool. It deals a lot of damage. We get some field generator, and then we get some Blackstone, and we fight a boss. So now it's the deployment screen. It's very straightforward. Since it's a boss mission, I'm going to have all my priests. Now, I'm pretty sure priests can die permanently. I have not had it happen yet. However, Serviators and Mechanists, um, these little ranger guys, are expendable. So I just hire them, and you don't have to worry about losing them. Um, I don't have enough to afford better servitors. So now there's the after you've recruited everyone, you see who you have going against, you see what you have. You can select your um, cant cycles, which are basically a power up. So this one makes you move faster. This one gives you cognitive point. This one makes it so your next attack does more damage. So I've got plus nine damage to the next physical attack and plus six damage currently. And then I have also um. A Leotar of Life, which heals my guys. So if I need to use those, I can heal my main priest fellows so they don't die. Now, uh, stat-wise, so they have their health, of course, the most straightforward thing. Then they have their armors, physical and energy, and that's the two types of damage. So this guy is actually pretty armored up. I just want to make sure that I actually have him properly equipped. I might have unequipped something. And I know he has everything. All right, that's good. So, yes, we'll get back to the mission. Stop dilly dallying. So again, all our tech presets. We haven't unlocked all the slots here. We suspect you can get better um, ships to fly with. And then we get our ranger. We get two servitors. We're going to deploy. All right. Very interesting choice with their voice acting. It's sort of like that. It's talking but not talking and they do that for the tech priests I believe so that because they're like communicating through their minds and through information so they're not actually speaking however if you heard that intro very much they do have some very good voice acting in this game so There's a lot of talking, you sort of get the story of what's going on, they're discussing what's happening. So, um, this is us, the big scary guy, I'm pretty sure. This is who we play as, and we're commanding from up here, looking down at the fights as they go on. Yeah, so she's basically telling us, go kill this guy. So he's surprised we found the boss. Quite an interesting story in this game. And I do like the echoiness of their voices. It gives quite a nice feeling. She's saying, um, basically, yeah, attack him. I mean, you can read it yourself, but um, we're just trying to find the location of this guy. And he's saying... High risk, high reward. They also, the tech priests like quoting things. They quote all the time. It's quite fun. It just gives you more of a look into the Warhammer world of the tech priests, all the quotes. So like I said, yep, she's all about the Skitarari. About um, using them. So she's saying they're holding perimeter around Scott's changer, but they won't be able to do it for long. So the Awaken protocol is happening. So she's saying, get there as fast as possible. 
and he's saying, this guy, there's a bit of a risk fighting him, but we can do it. So he's saying, destroying him is worth the risk. All right. So she's saying, Hunt is on, she's very much quoting, like, go get this guy. All right, so let's talk about this screen. So up here, we have the Tomb Awakeness level. So as you play, they awaken more and more, and they keep gaining bonuses. So it's sort of to encourage you not to dilly-dally. It wants you to go fast. Over here, we have the Initiative Advantage. So who gets the Initiative Advantage in the game? There's little commands you can do outside of combat. This gives us a little overview of who we have. Here is our Cognition Points, which are very important later. Got our Mission Objective. Now, one of the things I do want to talk about again, one of my complaints about this game, I really do like it, but one of my complaints, so you notice around here, going across, they look like flickers. Now, when I first played this game, I'd been playing a different game which had some audio bugs, and it looked, I mean, visual bugs, and it looked exactly like it. So, it's sort of, you, you think your, your game has screen tearing. It doesn't, but it really feels like it, and it's quite worrisome. So of course we have this little service called watching for our big old tech priest. So this is like the little command screen we saw earlier, but yeah, it's sort of a bit buggy feeling, but it isn't. It's that's just how the game plays, so it's a bit concerning. I don't like that stylistic choice, although it's very much in the style of the game. They could have approached it differently, I feel. So Um this guy is saying some stuff. Um, so this guy just sent us a direct communication, and we're really excited about that. So now you get to choose how you respond. So the Sidious Whisper worms its way through the um, nososphere, infecting the awareness of everyone connected to it. it appears to be incept thought in the minds of everyone to of exception at once. So we can perish the thought, intent or session of self castation, punish the whole heart for such thought. We can address the troops, saying um, his words are meaningless, or we can analyze the source and try to learn something about him. So it gives you a lot of time three options, and he's currently attacking your mind. So if we analyze the source, we'll see. So this is our little tep guy. He's very excited. He's saying um, that there is um, Mechanist and Necron Tech may be able to um, interact. And I got some cognition points for that, which is very nice. Now, already walking the tomb, waking, this little bar fills up. So it's got five takes and it fills up and goes up one level. So, yeah, you proceed through the area, going from point to point, encountering whatever dangers there are at the location and trying to proceed through choosing the best choices. So there he gave us a little psychic attack. Now we have a chamber which contains a bunch of sarcophaguses of necrons. Any destroyed necrons have teleport away, but there's many intelligence to glean here. So this area explodes. So we can search it. We can smash the entire cactus so they can't be used again, or we can scavenge. So my goal, I think, very much right now, I like to play the sort of knowledgeable, like, let's gather knowledge from the Xenos in this game. It lets you have different play styles. However, this moment, I think we need to destroy the Necrons. Alright, doing that was a bad idea, though, um, because this guy gets injured. In the, it says, in the progress of Smash the Scrofus, Cohort breaches a fuel line and I get hurt. So you never really know what happens. So one of my servitors is hurt, but... Uh, that's not too bad. He's a servitor. They're very expendable. It's very much the Warhammer 40k feeling. These guys are just expendable. So now our presence has been detected. This means that um, they're aware of us and st stuff's going to start happening a bit more. We're not sneaky. So this guy's going on about... Um, Take care, Magus. This is blasphemous even being here. We have to destroy everything. So, Reams, Lustra, Daz, Fillars, um, and now we have to basically deal with it. So, we're going to run th down through the ship. And this just increased the wakefulness of the tune level by a bit. So, it increased the level by one, so it didn't do anything for me. But it's not that bad, it's just one level higher. 
we walk along here, and still the it goes up two every round we walk. It goes up two. This guy's insulting us, so the voice is going against us. We can um, cleanse the cohort's minds with a prayer session. We can uh, ignore the transmission, or we can contempt. So we can reduce the curse and prayer transmit a high volume through the tomb. I'm going to Consecration knit up. So that gives us me two CP, so again, little text things, little pictures up here. The glitchiness works here because you see the limitation of it, like the little glitch, but when it's on the big map, it feels like tears in your screen, it's kind of worrisome. But this is just what we're due, and it just makes us feel happy to pray. Now we get to these things. These are fun little glyphs that we have to deal with, and Necrons have awakened more, this means there will be more Necrons in the battle, which is kind of annoying, but now we click on the glyphs if we want to deal with them. So um, there's a portal glyphs we can choose to interact with them. Now I think this is a bad glyph that I just clicked on. There's good glyphs and bad glyphs, and I just clicked on bad glyph. So hopefully for the next one I won't click on that glyph. Again, the little Tomb Awakened track goes up to every time you walk. So yeah, that's the bad glyph. So this should be a good glyph. Yeah, so this one healed it. However, my uh, priest is hurt, which isn't the best thing. Game hurt beforehand. You have to be kind of careful with glyphs. And you can ignore them if you want to. But you sort of start learning them and they can just always be a good thing. Which is kind of nice. It sort of like rewards you for playing. So you can play this game and play it perfectly ahead of time. It's a bit of an interesting choice because if you know the glyphs, you can get them. But that means people can just look them up which one's the best choice. So they might be random, however I don't think they are, because that one's being consistently bad and the other one's being consistently good. So if you basically remember the glyphs though, you can use them for your own purposes. So Necrons reanimate, turn faster, you'll see what that means. So the tomb level has gone up by three. It's a bit scary. Now she's saying this is the sarcophagus of Entropus. Looks like he sees himself as the center of the universe. I was called. I warned you. This world is ours. This goddess is ours. But you do not listen. The weak are ignorant, for they fail the knowledge of the strong. I just. I love the voice acting of Entropus. It's very good. They, like I said, stylistic choice of the tech priests sort of communicate uh, psychically, and Entropus communicates just by talking. Like you can actually hear him talk. basically saying he's got, not going to roll over and get beaten up by us humans or tech priests. And she's saying that um, he has consciousness exter exterminate him with extreme prejudice. Um, so ahead lies the grand ornate coffin with a center of clockwork armory, stars plant, orbering the sarcophagus. Oh, he is the center of the universe. So we can exceed the initiative, don't wait for him to fully awaken the open fire on Scrofus immediately. We can prepare a defense, use the seconds before awakes to set up a barricade to fight him. Or we can research. So I don't think I need to do that because that'll just give me those points. I think I want to seize the initiative here. So Core has blasted Sakoff's weapons, components rupture, dangerous pulse rate, so hitting the cohort and damaging them. Draft. So it didn't turn out good. I thought all of them would like I could choose the advantage against the boss, but none of them seemed to work. Kind of annoying. There he is walking down the staircase. Big bad guy, the big scythe weapon. So, um, Necron Vanguard reporting out. 
Alright, so these are guys I weren't aware were coming up. Normally small data file from Necron Forms. This guy is very much like he has analysis, like he's very much a computer robot. Um, and now this guy, Vindix, is kind of pissed because the other guy knows about the Necrons. Because you're not supposed to know about Xenons. He's saying, um, wary of those that wander, I fear you step too close to heresy, Scruffle. So he's saying, you're being a bit of a heretic. He just wishes to learn about enemies so he can beat them. And this guy, I'm not sure what he is. He just seems to be my combat analysis. He agrees we can better fight them. This guy very much likes being, um, I don't know, clever and smart. So, like I said, Joy, I really like him. He has these little things like that. Joy, name, B, equal, plus, Vanguard, Necron Vanguard, Imperium, Gothic. So he's very much about, like, I'm special. These guys go first, which is a bit worrisome. So, um, I can set up my people for this battle, and I can call people in. So my guy is slightly hurt, I'm going to have him pile There is a lot of sarcophagi here, which is worrisome. This guy is going to put middle, sort of have him tank shots because he heals himself. So you can set up before her battle, here's all their weapons. And this guy is very much fighty, so I'm going to have him hide over here. Then I'm going to recruit this sniper guy. I'm going to put down both Serviators. So. Um, the Necron Vanguard deploying. So in this game there is um, Cognitions, which is very important and we'll talk about once I actually get to using my Tech Priest. Um, but this little guy, I'm, the Servitor is basically like melee meat shields. I'm going to run him forwards here, just so he can fight. Basically whatever comes to him. And again, the Vanguard, I have no idea what they are. So a thing about this game, so it tells you when you're in range. However, so unlike um, certain aspects of XCOM, you don't know how much health the enemy has. You have to find that out, basically, but it's very much there's hidden information in this game. So I don't know how strong these guys are, I don't know their health, but I can still attack them. So basically my sniper rifle fires here. All right. So he has the power to swap places with people. Now what this little guy does, is when he shoots people, he gives me knowledge about their stats. So I now know that the Vanguard have high defense and 12 health because he just shot one and got that information for me. Now I can run this guy away because I won't be hurt. It appears that he swaps places with the Vanguard as well whenever I hit them. It's very um nice. I like the battle aesthetic of this game. It's very strategic, you have to think quite a bit to go through it. So I'm going to send... I feel like my Servitors are going to get owned by these guys immediately, just absolutely destroyed. Still going to send them forward, because Servitors have a fun little ability, which is when they get hurt, they get healed by the Cognitive Points, which just adds another strategic element to this game. So our little hurt Necron fans advancing. Also, you can see their little eyes glow. Like, they just have these like nice little features that the eyes keep glowing. So this guy gives me cognition when it fits his turn. Now I guess this is something I should note as a feature of this game. Is whenever you click it sort of shows you this over map and then all you can do, all the interactable things. And you have like this little advance and then you say, okay, sure, I'll move forwards. Now we have this little servo skull our tech priests have. So I could use this to scan people and learn things about them. Or I can send it off to collect cognizance. Now cognizance is how you do special things with the tech priests. So this guy doesn't actually have any special abilities with his cognizance, but he can walk further with it. So if I want to walk him further, he can move about. These guys get hits of opportunity though, which means if we go try to walk past them, they will punch us and be jerks. So I'm just going to keep them staying here because they're quite scary. So this guy though, he has, um, as we can see, physical armor. So I am not really going to be hurting him with my tech priests because of his physical armor. 
However, I can still try to dink him a little bit. Because uh, another feature of this game is Mechanist Spears, which is every time you use something, your Mechanist Spears go up, and you can basically charge up abilities. So this guy's very much support. So again, very nice little graphics. He shoots them there, but he absorbs all the damage. However, I'm still charging up my Mechanist Spears. But melee attacks against these Vanguards are absolutely useless. Although I did deal a damage to him, and now your turn's not used up after you shoot. You can run away and still do stuff. So I can run him away over here. And he just stands here and is a happy little guy. And then this guy, um, he is going to scan the big scary guy. So I don't know anything about the boss right now, Lord Armstrong, but I'm going to go scan him and find out what I can. So this guy is very much melee resistance and has 40 HP. Unfortunately, I have a lot of melee damage, which is going to make this battle quite difficult. Now this guy has a fun ability, which is... So a lot of attacks use cognizant points. This thing uses three, so there's no way he'd be able to afford that really powerful gun. However, I can use this ability, making his first attack free. And now we can run up, and we see that we're in range. So basically, he runs up, gets right in this guy's face, and now can hit him with the super taser, which will hopefully kill him. Now, when you beat down Necron, they collapse and they have this little special uh, cognizant point that appears next to them. Now if I walk up to him, use the extra cognizant point, I can drain it from him. And now I can hit him with my axe, because Necrons, if you don't kill them, they pop up back to life and regenerate. Which is quite scary. Now I can have this guy keep on moving, keep on trying to do stuff. Which I'm going to do. I'm going to have him run up to here so he can get the cognizance from this pillar. By standing next to it, gets cognizance. I don't believe they can get to him. And then I can shoot him with my little gun. Still don't know his resistance, but I'm pretty sure he has physical resistance. But we don't, we just don't know the damage that was done. But I'm going to leave him up there. Now we've got this little guy. He's very much melee orientated, which isn't amazing because. This battle is against physical enemies. However, this guy's going to move, so I want to see what he does. So I'm going to delay my turn, which is an option so you can just sit back and wait. Giving us a little banter, and then he decides what he does, which is Endless Legion. Which he summons Necron Warriors to fight. Lovely. And now he's going to advance on us. I think we need to kill him fast. We need to kill him very fast. And these Necron Warriors get to immediately act. They're going to shoot my poor little priest who has no armor. I think we might be losing a priest in this battle. Right, this guy has some armor, but still, they hurt quite a bit. They hurt quite a bit here. However, right, this guy can now... Um, well, for one... Alright, so they, the Vanguard have a special ability, I guess, which makes you swap place with them. So now we have this Vanguard that's really up close and personal. Um, I feel like we have to kill all the Vanguard as fast as we can. So um, I'm going to Servo Skull him. This thing's scan also deals damage, which is kind of nice. So, I am going to use this ability now, which you can use once per combat. So now, my next melee attack will deal a ridiculous amount of damage. I'm going to have him run up and slap him with the axe. So that really hurt him. Now it's been used up. Um, if I try to run away, you'll get a of opportunity. I feel like he'll really hurt. So if I use this thing, the next physical damage, I don't know, this might be wasting a little bit using these prayers here. However, I want to deal with this guy that's in my lines. So this is going to deal five damage to him, even with his armor. So it's going to eliminate him, bring him down on his knees. Then hopefully, next turn, 
we can actually be downstairs, just gonna steal some cognition and that guy there. Now it's their turns again. So these little cognitions refresh, and then you can drain. So it's very good right up to standby. And even if you use a cognition point to get to it, it still gives you cognition. So if I run this guy forwards, he can punch the Lord with his physical damage. However, it's not going to hurt him, but we swap him out with that guy down there, which was kind of my goal. So that probably didn't deal any damage, and my Serviotor is now rather screwed. Which is the plan, though, because when Serviotors get hurt or die, they give me Cognition. So I was very much sacrificing him so I could get this guy out and about. Now then, I want to shoot this Lord with my Sniper Rifle. And hopefully hurt him a little bit. Of course they swap. So, again, hurt him a little bit. But now, hopefully, there is only two, there was only two Vanguard left. So hopefully now, and this guy's not charged up, they're, they're out of swaps. And I can't actually engage in combat. So I can't, all right, so I'm gonna run this guy forwards here and eliminate this Vanguard permanently with him. So just get rid of it, use that guy's ability up. End his turn. Now we have this fun little tech priest who gives us cognition. He is purely bullets attacks. He doesn't actually do that much damage. So I'm going to have him um, run away to up over here because these guys seem to do a scary amount of damage. And hopefully this plank him a little, maybe hurt him a wee bit. This bring down his health. I did not know they'd have so much physical resistance. Now a problem with this game is your battles just can't last on because the Necrons continue to awaken as the battle progresses. Now I'm going to also just run him. I should have shot these Necron Warriors over here. However, this guy can tank their damage as well, so I'm just going to run him over here and get this extra bit of Cognitions. And then maybe he can start shooting those Necrons. And he also repairs himself, which is very nice. Now this guy's special thing is it instantly charges. So first of all, I'm going to run him over here. And, um, excuse me. Move him up closer with a cognition point. See if I can even shoot him. So it's not going to do any damage power, I don't want him swamping. So alright, so he no longer swamps. Now this thing's charged up. So I'm going to run him forwards. And use my super taser. To zap him as a critical hit and dealt 10 damage. Which is quite nice. Now if I... This guy doesn't get hits of opportunity. So I can run up. And hopefully get a critical hit against him. Which I don't. Oh, I did get critical, however, it didn't do anything. So, now I'm going to proceed to run away from him, because he is quite scary. And I don't want him getting any more attacks against me. I'm to basically get away from him. Now, I can't actually hurt him at the current point in time. So it's best to take down his little friends. So I'm going to move up, use up a cognition point here, and basically blast them. It's very much a strategy based game though, you're not sure if you're hurting them or not. I only way hurt them apparently is with Casblan, so I should have um, switched out what I was doing. Also I don't have enough cognitive points anymore, so I'm going to stab this guy and then move up again, because if he tries to escape me, I get a hit of opportunities all the same. The the so he's basically saying he's going to kill off humanity. And he's going to summon even more Necrons. I think once tombs have been opened though, they can't release more Necrons. However, it's still a lot. And now he's walking up on my poor sniper. I feel like my sniper's dead here. 
So he deals 5 physical damage, and then these energy shots are going to hurt my sniper a lot. Which is not good. Now this guy, at least, he has a little bit of the energy resistance, but still, he is going to get quite beaten up by these guys. Now this guy tries to run away, and so I get the axe hits against him, which hurts him. And now he's going to turn around and shoot me, and really hurt that poor priest there. Which is not the greatest thing. And now... It's a new round for them. These things recharge. I get the cognitive point back, which is nice. And they can just teleport and then teleport together. So the Vanguard basically takes them away from the melee combat. So Vanguard's very much based around saving people. And now my poor guy is getting beaten up by the Vanguard. And he gets the cognition point for me. Now this Vanguard is walking up and he's planning to really hurt me. So now this guy gets a hit of opportunity against my poor little sniper, so I'm going to have him wait. And then I'm going to run this guy over here, along whatever this does. I have worried these little blue lines might actually do something, I'm not exactly sure. But he's going to hit him, and I guess that's his turn. Um, this guy gives me extra cognition, and now he's going to um, beat up on this little Necron warrior as much as he can. Get critical, kill him, that's nice. So criticals, even though they go down, that's another feature, even though they go down immediately to certain um, shots, the criticals immediately take them down. I'm going to reveal the stats of this guy, even though I sort of know them just so I can know better. So he's already heard a bit. So, you do have to be careful, though, not to have that guy killed and then he automatically repairs. Um, so they shoot this guy, and that gives me another cognition, which is kind of what I want. Um, I feel like this is a puzzle slightly, like maybe these things do something or other if I activate them somehow. So again, scary lords right here. So I can run up to scary lord and give him um, a tasering here. So again, okay, so he swapped places. I was not expecting that. I guess they can choose what happens. So that is a huge amount of damage dealt to this guy. Now I'm going to shoot him with the machine spirit and get the critical hit so that kills him. I get the cognition immediately. A little bit annoyed that I didn't get him. So I'm going to also just run up to this guy and now hit him with my axe, even though he has a physical resistance, it still hurts him a bit. Then I'm going to scan that. I'm right next to him, so if he tries to move away, I still can hit him. So still trying to take a bit of control of this fight. So now I have the big scary boy right next to him. So he can research a bit. It's just the dealing one damage is sort of what I want. Then I can um, walk up to him and punch him with my axe and possibly deal one damage, which I don't. But uh, still, still have dreams. But then I can move him back. Oh wait! Does their physical armor get used up as you hurt them? Because he only has three now. Um, knocks back a target. Um, oh, I'm slowly destroying his physical armor with my axes. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know they did that. So you slowly do get rid of armor with the axes, which is nice. So this guy's not actually completely invincible. And now I'm going to run this guy away because I don't want him dying. And I'm going to actually even use Cognition, my last one, to get him into here to hide from this guy. Because he's quite scary. So I love the voice acting of this guy. The Necrons are just so nasty, and I love the aesthetic of the map. And you just sort of feel the aesthetic of Necrons, like they just keep coming out, and now there's the Immortals, which are very nasty. Immortals detected based on locked loading. So, a little bit of talking. So there's this guy on the spine who gathered all the knowledge already, and he 
reveals these things about something. So Necrolong mortals are quite nasty. So we want to kill this guy though as fast as possible. So he's saying be careful of their um, molecular weapons because they do something nasty. File corrupted. So there's something dangerous about their weapons he's telling us about. This guy keeps on walking forward quite menacely. Oh, he can get him. He gets the hit of opportunity though, dealing damage, but now I suspect this tech priest is dead. So he took five damage. So first time tech priest died, so we learned something new, I guess. Sheesh, I should have run away a bit farther. I didn't know they were that fast. I might lose this battle, it appear. And now the immortal. Holy cow, his weapon hurts. Alright. So. Um. Going to. Um. Move this guy over a few steps. So he can. Shoot this prick. With sniper rifle, deal four damage. And then I'm gonna have him run away over here. And now the Necron Vanguard gets to go first. I was hoping to get initiative on them. This guy's quite scary. I should have played defensively, I think. I Alright. So they're teleporting them around. And now he goes for a little walk, so he just gained them out of harm's way, basically. These Vanguard are quite annoying, and a new one just woke up. Ah oh, man. I feel like I was ill-prepared for this fight. Alright, so... Um, we have a shot on him over here. Get a little walk, shoot him. Of course, Vanguard are going to switch places, which is kind of the intention. And just get that shot on the Vanguard. Hurt him a little bit. And my turn there. So now this guy... He's right near him, gets back some conscience. And he's hurting quite a bit. Um, if I move you right here, then you can shoot the Immortal, who's quite scary. The Immortal's not running away, and we have no idea what's hurting him or not, because he has a lot of armor. Well, then we can run our little Magus over here, Getting some cognizance. And then... Excuse me. Continue the running away. So he hopefully gets out of range and doesn't die. But I don't want to risk him dying. This guy is quite good still. Very armored up. So we're going to use this dictate of life. And he's going to be repaired five. There we go. And he auto repairs himself as well. Now this guy's trying to walk away, and he does get away, we get the critical hit against him. And now it's our friend fen friend's turn. So I'm basically going to uh, bum rush this sucker. Get right up in his face. Hello, it's me. Your friendly neighborhood friend. He's got the machine spirit here. So he can just get the Blast for free. The zap. Deal a bunch of damage. Then you can walk up. And axe him. Use the machine spirit to lower the armor. Deal the two damage. He loses some honor. Then he can... Back off. A step. And... Shoot him, possibly dealing the two damage. So it was crit, dealing 4 damage, which is nice. And now we can have him run away from these guys. And um, hopefully he doesn't die. He has quite a bit of armor. We're still getting insulted, but yeah, you can definitely see a strategy of this game. It's very much using the cognizance you get. And this guy just keeps on summoning Necrons, which is absolutely terrifying. I'm going to get overwhelmed here, I feel. I might lose this. Hopefully he's not fast enough to make it to me. Um, he is not. Excellent. Alright. So these guys are advancing. They don't actually have any shots on me, thankfully. Now everything recharges. And these guys are coming after me, which is quite scary. They're just walking up on me, trying to be menacing. They're all quite 
close together. So I'm going to take the sniper shot on him, and they swap, of course. So sniper just shoots him, dealing that four damage, which is what I want. And I feel like he's just going to uh, stand here, maybe run over here to try to be some sort of bait to get their attention. This guy gives me some cognizance, which is nice. If I have him, um, basically, those immortals, I, I'm going to scan the immortal. Let's see how much armor the freaky immortal has. Alright, so they're all physical armor, which is actually quite good. They're all electric. So I'm going to have him um, run up to here, get the extra cognitive point. And I'm going to shoot the immortal, and they swap, so that's used up all the swaps. Alright, now I can run over here. And I still get the cognizance from this thing, which is excellent. And then I can shoot the immortal again. And he actually gets hurt this time. And then I can run and try to hide behind this. Try to use that too much light advantage, hide behind that. Now, warriors advance. However, I think I've got this guy because I um, don't have enough points. However, I can use the cognitive freedom. So now my next ability I can get for um, three. And then if I run around behind him here I can do a little fun thing with this chain lightning which is I can zap both of them. I might be able to get a better angle elsewhere but this is pretty good. So I took him down, however, he's not down down yet. Oh no, I dealt critical, so that's gone rid of him. So I'm pretty sure I just won that battle. Yep, I eliminated the target, beat the boss. We lost the tech priest, but we beat the nasty lord. Heavily armored, war form, lord of his collapse, spewing parts and flames. Um, Gastic's coil rupture for a moment, rod dabs, bleeding, stricken neck edge, distorts, alien stars, flicker, bunch of stuff. All right. The target's eliminated. Um, Sky report reducing the corpse, the coronation of Necron units in the tomb area, a moral and staff for success prime heresy. Self congratulation is logical, high value targets remain. Nevertheless, Capricux, the blows struck against the Xenons here, has made us happy. No celebration, no pause, the hunt will never be off. So she's our boss fight person, I guess. But yeah, we beat him. Now, this final thing, it uh, shows you your points. So, you lose points for having your priest hurt. You lose a lot of these gems for losing a tech priest. Um, these guys, doesn't matter if they die or not. These guys gives you some points back if they survive. So, I got some things I got the troop deployment cost is reduced now permanently, which is a new upgrade. I got the Blackstone funds. Um, of course, even though I beat him, this thing gets three, so it ticks up and makes them awaken in this screen, whatever that means. And of course, they give me points as well for killing them. So I got a new card for completing five missions. I can now heal 10 HP, which is quite nice. For killing one boss, I get a card, which gives me um, just plus six damage. Ignore all armor? Wow. Yeah, so you get like these little achievements which give you these cards, which are quite nice. So I completed that mission and got a bunch of stuff done. So she has no missions for me, however this guy does now. So his missions... Oh, he gives me a buzzsaw thing. That's fun. So he wants me to find fuel. So this guy is my resource gatherer, I guess. Yes. Or, not this guy is my resource gatherer, he is the resource gatherer. Alright, now, um, I guess to show you the final features of the game after that boss fight, it's rather long, yes. But, um, the final features is the upgrading of your cohort. Ah, so even though this guy died, he is still with us. So you just lose a bunch of points for them dying. Probably lose as many points as their rank is worth. Which sucks. 
Um, but we got some new things. So we got this thing, which um, all physical attacks gain plus three physical damage for one round. So this guy has a little physical attack gun. Um, I'm going to upgrade this disciple because he, I feel like he needs it. So you can choose various different body parts to upgrade. So you can give him more health, make him do more energy damage, um, have better energy armor. And you can see the little upgrade trees here when you choose to upgrade the disciple. So you upgrade their rank and then you can choose to add bits and bobs to them. So if you just keep going, um, so I can make his Mechanist Spirits deal 2 damage instead of 1 damage. Or Mechanist Spirits attack just deal more damage. So um, I can just basically give this guy this upgrade which gives him more HP. And now he has an additional slot. And now I can throw this on and now you see he got that. He has the armor fills up slot and then I can upgrade him again. So his angered spirits just deal more damage. So now he's even more scarier and he has another slot unlocked. So I can, oh, that thing takes two. So can I get rid of zero? Okay, so that takes two. So if we get rid of that, then we can equip this little thing to his back and now he deals a scary amount of damage. So yeah, you can see different upgrades and I basically upgrade him to make him more scary fellow. He's still very much melee based. Um, but now he can like deal a huge amount of damage with a go. Um, I feel like I should almost give him this energy blast attack or something. Um, but it's all his physical damage that deals more. So is there a scary physical gun? Ooh, this thing's new. So, um, this is a heavy arc rifle, so it doesn't deal the chain... Oh, and then it turns into a cone. So, this thing versus this thing. So this thing's cone is much more damaging. So, if I felt like it, I could, um... Give this fella... Instead of this thing, I could also give him this. Um, I... Um... Very much. This guy's heavy. Uh, he doesn't have enough. Does this require two? I bet this requires two. Um, you need more. It requires three augmentation slots. Wow. You're not using this thing. Oh yeah, three augmentation slots. Holy cow. So if I get another tech priest, I might just make him like that pure, pure rifle buddy. However, it's not the case here. This guy is still solo ranked. I feel like I should rank him up. Um, but yeah, so you can upgrade them, give them new items. As you saw, um, not this guy, by him. We gave him the little thing that makes him deal more critical damage and stuff. So yeah, you can see you can move around parts. There's the upgrading, you can go through upgrades. I really like the variety and options. Um, if I can, like, there's a huge amount of options I really like. Also, log, that's quite nice. I didn't know that before. It tells you everything they can do. But, very much like the different branching paths, then as you go down them, you can get new armors and new upgrades. And each different branch has different special abilities. And then each different branch also has different uh, augmentations you can do to their bodies to make them different and new. Little servo skulls repairing them. So, you continue to unlock stuff with them. Cohort, you continue to unlock people. Such as if we um, go over to the missions. Um, not this thing. But if we go over to him, as you can see, you get this new weapon, this new healy thing, a noise reducer. There's enemies here, it tells you about. And then this guy, he gives you a, new, a ranger and some sort of grenade or something? I don't know. And different enemies also reward. She makes it so you have more cognizance and get a vanguard. And then this guy just gives you a buzzsaw of some sort. So yeah, each one though does different things for you and different quests. It's quite interesting. Um, so review wise, you're getting a first look, a first feel of what this game is. 
what would I recommend getting this game in its current form? Well, this is the final release. It's actually a little past the final release. And I would recommend it. If you want a game like XCOM that is a st quite strategic, but also different, it has a new and unique offered strategy with the Cognizance. I really like that feature. You can keep running around, getting new Cognizance. It's quite good. You're, you're like, oh no, I can't do anything. Then you kill the enemy, you steal some Cognizance from them, then you can get extra movement or maybe that extra power up in. It's very nice. I like that feature quite a bit because instead of feeling like a resource you have to save onto to do one final blow, you can just keep on using it to get new bits. So it's very well implemented sort of resource management of your, you can always get more. Um, I very much like the dynamic of the energy and physical attack. It's very simple, straightforward armor. I do like that quite a bit. The missions are quite good. Just the various different stories, various different themes. This religious guy. I mean, this really tech-engaged guy's little character lines. Then this guy being very much based around being religious. I even like the voice acting, like the slight amount of... Like just that, oh, shoot, ooh. Upgrading, you feel very much like you're building up a base. I really like when you modify these guys, just all the stuff you can see, like you can see everything that gets added onto your little priests. Like, I purely got this guy, like the beard's all right armor-wise, but I purely got him like this weird, the tech axe head augmentation, because it looks cool. It gave him a big beard, which made him look neat. That's the whole reason I gave it to him. It looked like he had a big tentacle beard. But yeah, it's just the augmentation, the changing them. I really like you can see the changes. The enemies are quite fun. The boss's voice lines are quite fun. It's very much grim, dark, very much the feeling of Warhammer 40k to it. So, I recommend this game if you like uh, Warhammer 40k and the Tech Priests, and you want to get into strategy, I recommend this game just for that story aspect. If you're looking for a good strategy game, getting into them, or in-depth strategy game. This one's very good for both of those. If being new or old strategy games, it teaches you how to play the game, gives you a whole new perspective, has some very fun mechanics in it. So I would definitely recommend this game. Also, since aesthetic's beautiful, I believe it's quite easy to run. All the graphics settings not be able to adjust them, that's their choice. I guess it's kind of hard to reduce these things still. I would like to see the ability in most games to reduce graphics. However, it is not an end-all or be-all of games. Still, quite a fun game to play. I like it quite a bit. I look forward to playing it. I would definitely recommend this game. It is a bit pricey, so maybe buy it on sale, but I don't know what your budget is. I think it's around $40-$50. I'm not exactly sure on the prices. But it is definitely worth the cost, whatever its baseline cost is, I'd, I'd say. Like, it is a good strategy game. Like, you can get quite a bit of enjoyment out of it. When I first started playing this game, just to get a good feeling for it before doing the review, I just, like, I play games for fun, but I just, like, this game was so fun, and I was just playing it, and then four hours had gone by. I was like, what, really? Four hours have gone by? That's very surprising. So it's a very fun game. I would recommend it. It's very much strategy. I feel like I can recommend this broadly to, um, most people. However, if strategy games aren't your thing, or you don't like cyborgs, I wouldn't recommend this game. Law of Cyborgs is definitely heavily strategy focused. Also, if you get frustrated by random chance, I wouldn't um, recommend playing certain parts of it, or just be aware, I guess not recommend playing certain parts, but be aware that um, going through the little over map, random things will happen to you. You don't have much control. You can sort of try to choose things but in the end, it's going to be pretty random what happens unless you're looking at the guide for every best step along the way. This is a game where you don't have to save scum to do it, which is quite nice. Um, save scum being if you don't like the thing, you can you reload. However, you do have the option to do it because you can save the game at any point and reload it. I didn't find any options to turn into hard, um, hardcore mode or Iron Man it. They're probably there somewhere. We can even check that right now. So, back to main menu. Um, if we... New game. So there's no actual... Um, appears to be no actual difficulty settings here though. Unfortunately. So the game doesn't have difficulty settings. Which is... Um, 
slightly upsetting. Just because it is nice to be able to control the difficulty of thing games, but there's definitely it does have a pretty good tutorial, although you can skip right through it. So, um, but there is no difficulty. I was just running through a quick new game here, but it appears we you cannot attack affect the um, difficulty of the game. Maybe you can after you skip the tutorial. I'll quickly check that just to see. Um, there is still. Yeah, there is no settings to affect the difficulty of the game. So you choose which missions, I guess, by difficulty. Yes, but it is quite a fun game. It's very nice looking. I would recommend it if you like strategy games. I would recommend it if you want to get into strategy games. It's just a fun game to pick it up. We can quickly check the price here. Um, just launch Steam. Store. Um, sorry about the time this takes. We can definitely check the price of this game. There is sales going on. So it might even be on sale. Well, it probably won't be on sale by the time it releases. You can date the game by, um, well, when I did this, right here. Hopefully it comes out the day afterwards. However, that's the information is not important. So, um, I believe this game is definitely going to be under, uh, popular releases. If not, I can search it up quickly. Things take quite a while to load for me because of my internet. Um, let's see. So the top selling games. Um, all right, it is not top selling. However, it's probably under popular new release. Um, or maybe it isn't. Warhammer 4K Mechanist. So it is definitely affordable. It is Canadian. It is three, four dollars. So who knows what that is American. So it's a very affordable game, so I definitely would recommend picking up. It's quite cheap, it's very fun, you can play it for a lot of time. It's a really good strategy game, got a fun story, fun background. If you want to explore the world of Warhammer 40k, it's got that there too, but you can also ignore that, the story isn't all important. The strategy game stands on its own regardless of the story. But the story is quite good too, the little interactions between the various different advisors is quite fun. It's just a fun game in general. So. I would recommend this game if you are into strategy games. It is um, definitely brings a refreshing and new aspect to strategy games with how it goes about things. The cognitive points, the movement, you basically feel like you have unlimited movement as long as you have cognition. Various different upgrades are quite fun, just how customizable your tech priests are. Then you have these chump soldiers which are just expendable. You can send them out to die, it's quite nice having the chump soldiers and you're not worried about them dying. So that is quite a nice feature too. Just, it's having a load of chumps. You do lose the points when your soldiers die, but they're not dead permanently, which is also quite nice. So, because you get attached to soldiers, so even though they die, they come back. Now, if you fail the mission, I suspect your priest might die. I don't know, I have not failed the mission. I've not gotten to see more things, but as a first glance, as a first review, it is quite fun. I have played it for a good amount of time. I don't feel like the strategy gets stale because it's just always adding new mechanics, and even then, it's always a fun puzzle. Even if this combats were almost exactly the same, which I've encountered a few, they have a random generation which changes things up, and your soldiers get better, so it's fun to have your more powerful soldiers in a new situation which you've been in before, I mean, old situation you've been in before. So you can now like, oh, this is now easy to handle, I can do it. So the game altogether is quite fun. I would recommend it if you like strategy games, and it is also very much a look into Warhammer. So um, that was my review of this Warhammer 4K Mechanist. I hope it has enlightened you. I hope you have learned what Warhammer 4K is. I hope that my answers were sufficient. So. Thank you kindly for all your time, and I hope I have helped you in deciding to buy this game or not. So, that's that.